Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new unboxing or product review. And this time we are going to look at the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Forbidden Power from the Souls of War. So this is an expansion set for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. It's called here, Warhammer Age of Sigmar expansion set. And here we are going to have some endless magic, we are going to have some campaign rules and also some rules for new terrain. So let's make a look what you can find inside. Okay, so we go, it goes with this type of boxes. I already opened it, so I know what is inside because I wanted, I wanted to know for the review. So here we have all the material. Okay, let's... Uh, we have the bases. These are the bases for the endless spells. Okay, and now here we have, here we have uh, different um, spruce. So this is a new piece of terrain that is coming with the kit. Uh, it's nicely detailed. It's a great plastic this time, so it's not like the marine source that was color plastic. So it's neutral and it's not a push fit uh, plastic. In this case, I think it's, it's just a regular. So we have, of course, on some places a pin or places to orient the miniature, but, or the, yeah, but it's, it's a regular uh, assembly. Uh, here we have this wheel, so I guess, this, yeah, we have these two wheels that are connected by flight so this needs to be cleaned up we have these nice spikes here and also you can see that there is a very nice and crisp text uh, engraved on the bars we have another one that is very similar it's part of this piece of terrain okay uh, also we have the nice uh, runes or text there we have all these and you can see that it's quite nice and crisp but it looks quite good These are the two spoons that are making the the terrain. Okay, so this is I guess they will they will be able to launch the terrain a lot if they want. So here we have and then we have here the endless spells. So this is the one that is the boat. Okay, I will talk later on about the the spells and how they are uh, how they work. Okay, so here we have the one that is the, the boat. And I think these are all the parts for to make the one that looks like a boat. Here we have two spells, the one that is the head of Nagash, okay, the, the parishion of Nagash, and then we have the other one that is this uh, one with the small pyramids. And finally we have the bridge that is two times the same as Pro, okay, the bridge is formed from the, so It's all nicely detailed, it's crisp. Here you can see there is all this type of skeletons in detail and that, yeah, it's quite nice. Then we have this separation and we go to the books and the cars. So uh, I will make the, a look to the cars later on. There is also these tokens. These are the tokens for the campaign, but there are also objective markers. Okay, these are objective markers. It's right in here also, okay, objective markers. And then we have these that are for some uh, rules and for something that you can have on the uh, campaign rules. Okay, so here we have some tokens. And then we go to the books. So we have first the book to build up the different uh, terrain. So here we have for the horror gas, which is called the Avandir. Then um, the Reich apparition, uh, the Lauchon, uh, the Soul Seekers, so the boat. And we have here the bridge, so this the Soul Scream bridge. And then we have, uh, yeah, there is some. I, I, just skip by mistake the small pyramids are somewhere or they are at the end, I don't know. But you can also have the rules for the... the uh, no, the pyramids, yeah, they are not here because they come assembled. So, this is the point. This is why we don't have the instructions how to assemble something that goes, that comes in one piece. Okay, and then we have uh, the uh, penumbral engine. This is a new piece of terrain that you see that is like a astronomic type of looking piece of terrain okay so let's put it this away I want to show you so this is the why the pyramids are not there because they are just one piece and they go on top of the basis then only then we have let's go first to this one we have the core rules again so let me remove this for the moment we have the core rules I will not uh, go to in detail because there is nothing new here. I don't know how many times I have this book to be fair. 
but we have the corals with all the uh, four colors ready to be used. Then we have the Forbidden Power Book. Okay, uh, what we have in the Forbidden Power Book? So uh, first of all, we have a lot of fluff. There is a lot of new um, background here, and then we have rules at the end. So uh, there is an introduction. What is Age of Sin? Blah blah blah. Okay, and then yeah, we go to the treasures untold. We go the dramatic personage. So this even this is new. Okay, where we have all the list of the main characters that will appear on the book, and I think Lady Oleander is one of them. Okay, we have Lady Oleander, Mortar of Grief. Uh, I will. I, I just bought the Pinator, so I will add the head in my army. And we start with they start with the Necroquake. Okay, remember this magic that was uh, provoked, uh, this um, magic quake provoked by uh, Nagash. And they just talk about Necroquake and then they talk about the relics of uh, the ancient cloister. Okay, these are, uh, they talk about the hidden bolts. That is a lot of fluff here, I will go fast, okay? You see here, this is a new piece of terrain. The realm of endings. And I think all this is happening in, in, in the sticks, okay? I think all this, all this uh, is really... Uh, I have not read that, I did not have time yet. But you can see there is a lot of fluff. There is a lot of text, so a lot of background here to be read it and to move the history forward. Here we see, I love this illustration. Uh, this is like, yeah, this is the Celestial Prime against the Lady Oleander. They're gonna shatter the top. Here we have the new painted, the new Endless um, spells. So the Shards of Balagar, the Horror Heist, the Lotion of the Soul Seeker. Then the bridge will come later, I guess. But here we said this is really nice, nice, nice pictures of armies. So really, really nice. Uh, there is uh, also a how to paint here. So painting a splatter, how you want to call it. And it's telling you how to do these pieces of terrain. It's very, very nice. There is also a way to do bases. So they explain different ways to do bases. You see different styles, but it's also very, very interesting. And I like a lot how to do the marble effects, so uh, maybe I will add this as, as also as a video tutorial in my channel if I have the opportunity. A lot of great ideas you can take from these books uh, as well. Again, how to do runes, I also did a tutorial for fire runes if you are interested in my channel. And here how to do the black pyramid, I love this one as well. So let me know if there is something that you find interesting for the channel, I will try to do the tutorial. And then we go to Defenders of Lathis, okay, and the uh, Court of Sorrow. So it seems that, uh, yeah, this, of course, these are Defenders. We have the Celestial Prime there, here in the middle, uh, with a different color scheme. Now it's with the black armor. I don't remember, sorry, I don't remember the name of this, uh, uh, how it's called, this uh, Storm Coast. But you will see that there is rules now to make uh, different alliances but I find it quite interesting as well. So let's go down to the rules. So we have a war for the storm balls, okay? And you will see that there is rules for pitch battle and there is rules for narrative games. They include a new thing that is called mercenaries, okay? This is a new thing that they have introduced in this book. It's a way to introduce, uh, uh, yeah, it's another way to introduce allies. So here we have all is fight in the region of the sticks, okay? so you have this uh, battle, uh, realm of battle, so you have rules for the terrain, okay? You will see that they will have new alliances here, okay? So let's start with a new one, the new one is called Lethician Army, so these are the defenders. And the Lethician Army uh, can uh, only include units that have one or more of the following keywords. So it can be Stormcast Eternals, all of them, Idoneth Deepkin, Caradon Overlords, Fire Slayers, 
Excelsior or Excelsior War Excelsior sorry Excelsior War Priest. And what is excluded are anyone that have Hammers of Sigmar, uh, Bostark, or Volturnos. So these are these cannot be included in this army. Okay. So I guess are um, special characters that are from one of these uh, sub uh, alliances in the alliance. What if you take from this, with this restriction, that is, is really quite a wide restriction, so it's not very restricted, then you can have an army that is called Guardians of the Raven City, and you have the new keyword that is called Lethian, Lethician Defender. Okay? If you have uh, the Lethician Defender, then you have the next battle traits. So in the Battleshock phase, you can reroll Battleshock tests for friendly Lethician Defender units. In addition, add one to the hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by human Lethician Defender or Duardin Lethician Defender units that are target enemy units that made a charge move that turn. So if you target enemy units that have charge, so you you have uh, you can have plus one to hit your defender. Okay, so it, you have what is the generic in a way the generic uh, rule for the order plus this additional thing and then you also have on top add one to the move so you have the Kellyan phalanx as well rule that add one to the move characteristic of a Kellyan Lethician defender so I guess uh, this I, I, uh, is another keyword okay uh, in addition add one to the charge roll as well so quite the you add movement and then you have the common ability Onyx Shield Wall. You can use this common ability at the start of the enemy combat phase. If you do so, pick a friendly Lethician Defender Liberators unit wholly within 12 inches of a friendly Lethician Defender Stormcast Eternal Hero. Until the end of the phase, add one to the safe rolls for attacks that target uh, that Liberators unit. However, the Liberator's unit cannot make a pile in move, so it's really for defending, right? You make like a phalanx. This can be interesting if you make a big block of 10, 15 Liberators, this can be quite hard. So this can be really an angle type of unit, a defender unit, a unit to block the enemy. And then you have, I will not go to all the details, you have common traits, okay? You have here artifacts of power as well for this uh, alliance. And then you have uh, prayers, okay? So if you have uh, to do prayers, uh, and then you have you don't have uh, spells. So this is an important thing to notice here. You don't have uh, spells, and I don't think you can take the spell from your alliance in your book. So you don't have uh, special spells for uh, uh, magicians in that case. Okay, but you have prayers. So it's really oriented more to uh, uh, priests uh, that uh, of uh, Sigma. Okay. Some of the praise are quite interesting as well, but I will not go into detail. So it's making an uh, interesting choice here. Then we have the Alliance of the Legion, uh, Alliance Legion of Grief. Okay, the Legion of Grief. Uh, yeah, if you are from this Alliance, you get the new keyword Legion of Grief. A Legion of Grief army can only include units that have one or more of the following keywords. So it's the Death Walkers. The Death Lords, the Death Mages, the Death Rattle, or Nine Hound, so an or. If includes any more targs, then it must also include Lady Oleander. So if you put any more tag, well, Lady Oleander has to be there. It's not a restriction. And she must be your general, of course, because. This, in this background, this represents that the Lady Oleander is the general of this uh, army. Okay. Then, then they, there is this, the next. <coughs> sorry, there is the next uh, battle traits. Okay, it's called the Infernal Host, and the first one is the un Unquiet Death. After territories have been determined before any units have been set up, you can pick up to two points in your territory and up to two points anywhere on the battlefield uh, to be the grave sites. You may wish to place uh, suitable markers on these points. Then instead of setting up 
a suitable unit from your army on the battlefield, you can place it on uh, one side and say that it is set up uh, in the grave. You can do this as many of your summonable units as you wish at the end of the movement phase for each friendly death hero within 9 inches of a grave site, you can pick a single friendly unit in the grave and set it up within 9 inches of the grave site and more than 9 inches from any enemy models. Any model that is unable to be set up in this way is slain. If a unit is still in the grave at the end of the battle, it is considered a slain as well. Very, I think it's the same rule as Nagash. Okay, then we have the Invigorate Aura. At the start of your hero phase, pick a friendly summonable unit within 9 inches of a grave site. See the unit in quiet death. You can either heal these 3 wounds that have been allocated to models in that unit, or if no wounds are currently allocated to any models in the unit, you can return a number of slain models to the unit that have combined wounds characteristic equal or less than the roll of a D3. Okay. Then we have the Deathless Minions. Roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound on a friendly Legion of Reef unit within 6 inches of the general or another friendly Legion hero. On 6 plus, the mortal wound is negated. So it's the same as the Undeath. So I don't see that it's uh, something new. Then we have the Aura of Grief. I don't know if this is new. To so strike one from the bravery characteristic of enemy no, units that are within 6 inches of... So I think this is the same. So we have mainly the Undeath. And then we have the common ability. You can use this common ability at the end of your movement phase. If you do so, pick a grave site, see the Unquiet Dead that is within 10 inches of your general and then pick as a fairly summonable unit that has been destroyed set up unit holy so it's the same i think it's the same rules as nagash okay summarizing so you have the same rules as nagash here in the in, in the battle tree. so no not it's not broken so it's just a new way to do death okay then you have new common traits these are going to be new artifacts of power are spell laws so these guys have spell laws Okay, and then we have, this is new, these are new rules, this is the uh, mercenaries rules. Okay, uh, the mercenary, uh, let's go for them because this is quite interesting. Okay, you can include that in your army and they, uh, they are not allies, they follow a different rules. So if a mercenary company is hired uh, by your army, one out of every four units you include in your army can either be an ally or a mercenary, so they have to be 25% of your units, not of your points. Okay, all mercenary units gain the mercenary uh, key work. Mercenary units are treated as part of your army, except that they are not included when working out your army's alliance and can therefore be part of a, defend, uh, a different Grand Alliance or so and can therefore be part of a different Grand Alliance or faction. So these guys uh, are breaking the rules of the, of the allies. So you can have an uh, army of order and then have mercenaries of death if you want. Okay, from the rest of your army. In addition, a mercenary unit cannot be the army's general, cannot use benefit from your army's alliance abilities, and cannot be named character. Okay, so this is also interesting. I guess you cannot use, I don't know if you can use the spells, they don't say that, that you cannot use the spells, but I think the spells are normally limited to your alliance. Reinforcements. If a mercenary unit uses the will and ability or a spell that that's a unit, uh, uh, that adds a unit to your army, the unit that is added to your army gains the mercenary keyword. They do not count against the limit of number of mercenary units that you can, so if you generate mercenary units for any meaning, because you can summon them for example, they don't count uh, in the limit. 
And then there is Warskwall Battalions. Warskwall Battalions cannot be included in mercenary units, okay? This is also important. Uh, in pitch battle, the points you have uh, available to spend on allies, uh, okay, can be spent on mercenaries. So this is follow the same rules as the allies, so they count as the points that you can put for the allies. Although any points spent on mercenary units are deducted from the total that you have available to spend on allies. Okay, makes sense. And vice versa. Mercenary units are not included when working out the number of battle line units in your army, but they do not they do count towards the maximum number of leaders. So they count for the limit but not for the line. So they are all considered special, and then if they are behemoths or, uh, or heroes, you have to take this into account. Or, um, or, or uh, how is called this? Uh, war machines. Okay? Mercenary special rules. If you include mercenary units in your army, the following rule applies during the battle. Disruptive presence. If your army includes any mercenary units at the start of your hero phase, in the first battle round, you do not receive one common point. Okay, so it's also costing the common point. So it's quite, you can include something very strange, but it's quite restrictive. Okay, and then here we have two examples of, or the first two mercenary options. The first one are called, are called, are called uh, the Greyfield Lodge, Lodge Mercenaries. So these are mainly files layers. If you pick this mercenary company to be hired by your army, you can include a files layers unit in your mercenary uh, 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 in your army as a mercenary unit with the following exception. So you cannot include Auric, Auric Rune Fathers. Okay, I cannot be included in the uh, okay. And then they have the next role, the next uh, rules that are also interesting. Add one to the hit rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by fire slayer mercenary units that are target uh, that target enemy units that made a charge move in the same turn. So the same that we have read for the Lethician army. Okay. However, from the start of the third battle roll, to strike one to from bravery characteristic of friendly fire slayer mercenaries you need while they are not wholly within 18 inches of your general so they have minus one bravery if they are not next to your general so you can include them but you have some drawbacks then there is the terrible scored mercenaries and this is a mercenary of flesh eater course okay so if you pick this mercenary uh, company uh, to be hired by your army you can include flesh eater course you need in your army as mercenary units with the following exceptions Royal Terror Haze cannot be included and Zombie Royal, uh, zom uh, sorry, Royal Zombie Dragon cannot be included as mercenary units Rules of Faithful Allies Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by the Flesh Eater Course mercenaries units that made a charge move in the same turn. However, flesh eater calls mercenary units make uh, I cannot make retreat moves, so they are really aggressive. But it is quite interesting, okay? But yeah, you can now add as a mercenary, for example, a terror haste because it's according to this rule, okay? You cannot be at the royal terror haste, but you can add a terror haste. And then you have a terror haste that have one to hit in the plus one to hit to the charge and cannot retreat okay so it's an option so it's it's you have a benefit and a drawback and then all these restrictions here that for me makes sense and not too overpowered it's nice that they give some rules to them then here we have a new piece of terrain okay sorry if I, this video is taking long but i wanted to go a little more detail than i used to doing before so an army of any alliance can include one penumbral engine terrain. So this is a engine terrain for any army. Here comes my question: Can we include this penumbral engine terrain and the terrain from the book? So can we go now with two pieces of terrain? This is quite. Uh, let's see. 
after uh, territories have been chosen but before armies are set up you can set up a penumbra engine wholly within your territory more than 12 from enemy territory and more than one inch from other terrain if both players can set up terrain feature before armies are set up you must roll off and the winner can choose the order in which the terrain features are set up. In pitch battle, the points you have available to spend on a light units, see what have an edge of Simmer call book, can, spend, can be spent on penumbra engine. Although any points spent on penumbra engine are deducted from the total you, uh, you have available to spend on a light. So, they cost points, and I'm wondering where are the points of this? No. I don't know if this. Ah, here are the points. So it's costing 100 points. Interesting. So this is the first terrain that is costing points. So this answers my question. So you have this piece of terrain, and you can go with the piece of terrain of your uh, armo, uh, army book. So quite curious this one. And then we have here the rules of the campaign. Here I will not go in detail, but it's more for the narrative gaming. Although they, they, they you can make a pitch battle, uh, battle plans, and you can have narrative plans. But to be fair, for me, uh, campaign by definition is narrative. And they have include what is called the Wakened artifacts, and these are artifacts of extreme power. Okay, so um, you start at, with level one, and as as the campaign is advancing, okay. Each next battle, it's increasing the power. So let's look, for example, the uh, Gazed Bane. Pick one of the bearers of melee weapons uh, to be the Gazed Bane. After each battle, Gazed Bane gains uh, a level power if three or more enemy models were slain by attacks made by the bearer. So you want to put this in on a killer guy. So, and the first power. Improve the rank characteristic of the uh, gauge beam by one. Okay, you have by one. You have plus one on, on. second level. <coughs> so in this battle, you kill three guys. Then you go to the next level. Add one uh, to gauge beam attack characteristics. So plus one attack, plus one right. You kill three more in the next battle. If the body or body fight hit roll for an attack with the gauge bait is a 6 that inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage so you do all, you, it's a cumulative right? Level 4, improve the red characteristic uh, from gauge bait by 3 instead of 1 so you, it's, well, this is a cumulative because it goes instead Last level, add 3 gauge bait attacks characteristic instead of 1 so you are a killing machine at the end Okay, and then you have 4 different Things okay, okay. I will not go through them. So you have a shield, you have a, a ether beast pinion, hate fleet payment uh, pendant. Sorry, real stone one and the life stealer. <coughs> so here we have. These are all the rules. Okay, and these are the. Yeah, there are some rules because you have to open the sack of sides and so on, and the bolts you, you want to uh, some of the bolts. And then here we have all the battle plans for the campaign. Okay. The first one are the pitch battle battle plans. So we have uh, four of each. Yeah. We have four pitch battle. These are the two and the next pitch battle. Then we have four narrative battles. And these are the first narrative. And we have the other narrative battles. And then there is this one that is a four player uh, scenario. Okay, we have here a, a, again another four player scenario using, using two perumal engines on the map. Okay, you have them here, and there is a different battle plan for four players. And then we have here. Uh, Let's go just to look at the spells, the many spells, I will go very fast through them and I will not go through the terrain. So what else comes here? We have uh, all these uh, scenario war scrolls. Okay, these are all for the new pieces of terrain that are coming, I think. Okay, we have the Hallowed uh, Storm Throne, the Enduring Storm Bolt, the Shattered Temple, Sigmarine Dice and the Time War Ring. Okay, 
these are not coming in this in this expansion so these are new terrain kits that will come then we have the penumbral engine okay this is the one that is costing 100 points and at the start of the first battle roll after the mining who was the first uh, turn roll a dice and consult the table on the right to determine which function all penumbral terrain features on the battlefield gain for the duration of the battle okay so from one to three uh, resolve safe rolls of one uh, for attacks that uh, target units uh, wholly within 12 inches of the penumbral terrain on 4 to 6, so the other 50%, at the start of your hero phase, you can receive one extra common point if any friendly heroes are within 12 inches of any penumbral terrain. Okay? And then on top of that, at the start of each battle roll, after the, uh, the, first, uh, after the first roll a dice, on 1 to 4, nothing happens. On 5 to 6, the function that currently applies to all penumbral terrain features is replaced by the other, so they, they switch. So it's not stable, so it's 100 points is a lot for this, to be fair. I find it a lot. Uh, penumbral terrain is a single terrain feature, and I was it somewhere, okay, that's all. That's all the terrain. So I'm not very impressed with the terrain, and I don't think we are going to have it this too much on the battlefield, to be fair. 100 points. Is too much for what this half. I think. Okay, especially what well, depending uh, the the yeah, dep but it's very unstable. And then we have four new endless spells, mainly thing for siege. So let's start with the shards. The shards are the pyramids. Okay, there's more pyramids. So uh, the shards have a casting value of five, and if successful cast, set up the first shard of Balagar. Model wholly within six inches of the caster, and then set up the second uh, shard model wholly within twelve inches of the first. So you may do one here and then the other one at twelve. Okay, very easy. At the start of the movement phase, draw imaginary a straight line of one millimeter wide between the closest parts of the bases. Okay, this goes on. I guess they will go on the smallest bases here. I need to check which base they go on the medium size base. I guess it's a medium size because it's the only one that is duplicated. Okay. Uh, here it is. Uh, between the closest parts of the bases of the two shards uh, of Bar. Models from this endless uh, from this endless spell. Each unit pass across by the line is uh, ensnared until the end of that turn. Half the move characteristic of a unit that is snarled. In addition, subtract one from the hit rolls for attacks made by uh, units that are snarled. Okay. So it's a way to, it's a, it's a X type of a spell. At the start of the battle roll, and this is the part that is making this spell quite difficult to control, at the start of the battle roll, after determining who has the first turn, the players must roll off. Okay, you roll off. The winner can remove one of the shards of Balagar model from the endless uh, from this endless spell from the battlefield and set it up again anywhere 12 inches of the previous of the one that is on the battlefield. So yeah, the guy just take one. And then, if it's the country that is doing that, it can go really against you again, uh, very easily. This battle is taking place on the realm of death. The first shards of Balagar model can be placed 12 inches. Okay, all of them are all of them are for the death realm. <coughs> Sorry. Then we have the horror gust. The horror gust for me is the weakest of these spells. And this one is also not very good because it's very difficult to control. The Orogas is a single model, it's a predatory endless spells, and it can move up to 9 inches and can fly. So it's 9 inches flying. Summon the Orogast has a casting value of 6. It's a successful cast, and the previous one was 6 as well. 
5, so this is a little bit more difficult. If successful cast, set up orgasm model wholly within 12 inches of the caster. Subtract 1 from the bravery characteristic of units, they are within 12 inches of this model. Subtract 2 instead from the uh, bravery characteristic of units while they are within 6 inches. So it's, it's a deep, uh, as making everything sinister. So yeah, this accumulate this for the nine for the death, this accumulated with the minus one you already do, you can start doing some damage. So if you want to play this part of more psychological warfare. If your battle is taking place in the realm of death, this model can move up to 12 instead of 9. Okay, it's moving faster. And yeah, and you summon the cast, you don't move when you summon it. Okay? Let's not say anything. Just summon it at 12 inches of the caster. <coughs> then we have the Soul Scream Bridge, and we also have the Laotian, uh, Laotian the Soul Seeker. These two spells, in reality, are teleporting spells or spells to move your units. Let's talk about the first one. The first one has a value caster of 6, and it successfully cast. This is the moving, of course, and the model consists of 2 miniatures. If this is a successful cast, set up the first Soul Twin Bridge model wholly within 6 inches of the caster. And set up the second at 12 inches of the first. At the start of your movement phase, because you do this in the hero phase, so at the start of the movement phase, fairly units wholly within 6 inches of one uh, Soul Scream Bridge model from this endless spell can travel across the Soul Scream Bridge. If they do so, remove the unit from the battlefield and set it up wholly within 6 inches of uh, the Soul Scream Bridge model. So you teleport to the, from one bridge to the other <coughs> at 6 inches, okay? So you can, you have, yeah, if you do it well, you can win quite some terrain, right? Because you have to put it wholly within 6, but then the unit has to be of a well, hole with 6, but you can go from the back to the front of the next one, so you can move more than 12 in reality. This unit cannot make normal move after that phase, okay? So this substituting your movement, so it represents that you are teleporting through the bridge. So strike number one from bravery characteristic enemy units that uh, while they are 6 inches of the Soul Scream, uh, Soul Scream uh, bridge model. This ability does not affect to death. So this is really for death, and I think this is to move skeletons. I don't think it's that important for Nine Hound. You don't need this movement, but if you want to have skeletons, ghouls, for example, that can be quite interesting as well. Uh, to move uh, some slow units can be quite an interesting uh, spell. And then if you are empowered, you can put the reach at 24 inches, uh, if you are playing in Siege, okay, in the realm of death. And the last one is another teleporter. Okay, it's not a teleporter, but you go on the boat and you uh, navigate on the boat to another part of the table. So it's also a prayer toddy, have movement 12 and can fly. Summon Laotion, the Soul Seeker, has a casting value of 6. If successfully cast, set up the Laotion, uh, the La uh, a Laotion Soul Seeker model wholly within 12 inches of the caster. <coughs> Sorry. When this model is set up, the player who set up can immediately make a move with it. If your battle is taking place in the realm of death, this model can move 18 instead of 12. And what it does? The soul prize. Before a player makes a move with this model, that player can pick up a friendly unit wholly within 3 inches of this model, so you have to organize your unit to be able to, to be at three inches of this thing, right? So you have to make a circle and be sure that you will be able to put the uh, boat in the middle of the circle, more likely. So you have to plan in front, and if you fail, it can be a problem. Yeah, casting value is six, but if there were other opponent spells, you are going to have a very strange formation. Remove that unit. Um, so, let's repeat, before play, uh, the player makes a movement, 
with this model, the player can pick up a friendly unit wholly within 3 inches of this model. Remove that unit uh, and place it uh, on one side. After this model has moved, so you move them the 12 inches, okay, set up unit again wholly within 3 inches of this model and 9 away from the enemy models. Once the unit has been set up, one model from that unit is immediately slain. So, and you have to pay the yeah, you have to pay the price of one soul. This, I don't think these spells are awesome or incredible. Uh, if you want to increase mobility, I don't think the strong cast tenor will sacrifice one guy. To be fair, okay, because it's one model slain. Uh, this, uh, this the cost of these spells is. 60 for the uh, horror heist, 60 for the boat, for the launcher, 40 for the shards, and 80 for the uh, soul scream bridge. I find the most useful will be the soul scream bridge, a little bit expensive, 80 points, because it's a double, it's a double way bridge, right? When you put that on the battlefield, the opponent can also use it in your direction. So you have to think it twice. I don't know, not, I'm not very clear, maybe the horror only for 40 points no, is the shards, the horror is 60 points, so it's quite a lot. And this is all what is coming, so sorry if this has been a, a little bit long video, but I wanted to go in a little bit more detail than pr in previous videos, I wanted to go through the main rules that, that we have seen here. <coughs> I don't think this is needed, to be fair to play Age of Sigma, so this is not something that is mandatory, uh, not even nice to have, to be fair. I don't think this is, especially if you play competitive, I don't think this is needed or is adding too much to your game. The mercenaries can be maybe the one thing that can be, but I don't see that they are overpowered, I don't think they will break the game too much. Uh, the new factions are mainly like playing Death or Order, so they have almost the same rules as Death of Order, I think. So to be fair, uh, it's more for background. If you like, I will say, if you like narrative gaming, if you like narrative campaigns, this is a good expansion for narrative campaigns. Uh, if you are more on the pitch battle play, on the on the competitive, on the tournament. I don't think this is the, the spells are not, I don't find them that good, I don't think I will use them a lot, these spells, uh, even if you play death, I don't think these spells are that interesting, and to be fair, the new piece of terrain, 100 points, is too much. Okay, so I will say, <coughs> uh, the Militus look nice, okay, so the sculpts are quite interesting, I like a lot the bridge, I think the bridge is for me maybe the, my favorite one, okay, this is the bridge of, uh, it looks like uh, ribs, okay, so in terms of miniatures, I think they are quite interesting, I also like a lot the boat, okay, I think the boat is also quite interesting, I, I think it will do this more like blood maybe, I don't know, I need to think how it will, because this can be interesting, uh, uh, they do like uh, this type of ethereal looking, but maybe we can do this more uh, bloody, but uh, yeah, uh, the terrain is nice, but it's nice just if you if, if it's free, if you have to be had a point, I don't think it's that interesting. There are terrains in the books that are much more stronger than this terrain. The fact that it's random and you cannot control it is quite uh, painful, especially for hundred points. And yeah, I think I would say for narrative game, it's a good expansion. If you are more into the competitive, I don't think this is uh, an expansion needed for tournament or competitive players. And that's all. So this is my see. It's yeah, as I said, not a mandatory expansion if uh, for Age of Sigma. And if you are not very interested in that, uh, maybe it's not your expansion. Uh, that's all for now. That's all what I want to share here. Uh, I hope you uh, have liked uh, this unboxing. I, I wanted to go, as I said, quite in good detail, and that's all for now. 
So as usual, I want to thank you for watching this video. Give a like if you have liked this video. Share, subscribe if you don't subscribe it. And as usual, thanks a lot for watching. And see you again later. Bye.